Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I have a full review to do for you on what is probably one of the coolest knives I've ever owned. <laughs> I think quite a few people would argue it's the coolest knife I've ever owned, based on the number of people who, when I've posted anything about this knife on Instagram or YouTube, have asked to buy it from me. Um, I think there's some excitement and some hype around this knife. Uh, this is the American Karma. And Kurt Merrikin is a really cool dude. I got to meet him. Um, actually, I'd met him before, but I got to interact with him at Blade Show Texas, where I got this knife. I won a lottery to be able to purchase one of the knives on his table, and it was a hot lottery. A lot of people were trying to win the ability to buy one of his knives. Um, I think that's a pretty good reflection on his reputation as a maker, and I think that reputation is well earned now that I have this here. Um, I will say right now, right off the bat, before I jump in, um, if you are thinking that you are going to message me and ask me if you can purchase this knife, the answer is no. And it's not because I'm never going to sell it, it's because I'm, I already have a, a buyer uh, lined up. And with that in mind, there is no part of me that is selling this knife because I'm at all dissatisfied with it, not even a little bit. It has been a thrill to own this knife, but the secondary values <laughs> that this knife goes for are preposterously high and somebody offered me a number that I'm just unwilling to refuse um, because frankly I could use that money more than I could use having this knife in my collection and maybe there will come a time where I don't have to think like that but I do at the moment so um, I'm letting this knife go begrudgingly because I love it it is wonderful I've carried it a good handful of times now, gently. Um, I've used it a couple of times now, gently, and I've flicked it here on the couch quite a few times. Um, and I've just, I've tried to kind of soak it in and feel it out and just enjoy it for what it is. And I feel like I have. It is exceptionally well made and it is a really cool design and there's a lot of great happening here. So I totally get it why this knife goes for what it goes for on the secondary and why Kurt's knives do in general. He is a super talented maker after getting to experience this one. So this model is called the Karma and this in particular is a three inch bladed version of the Karma and as you can see it's kind of a bowie like clip point grind. We've got forward jimping and backward jimping. Uh, we have a dark tie clip that is anodized in a cool color with a matte finish. We have a zirconium backspacer. We've got cool pivot hardware on both sides and we've got this awesome speed hole pattern that has a kind of a swoop thing going on here. So really a rad spec of knife. When my name got pulled out of the lottery there were three knives left on Kurt's table and all of them were Karma's and this one was a little bit thicker than the other two left on the table which at first made me think I might not pick it because I generally like really thin knives in pocket. But the other two had steels that were not simple. <laughs> they had steels that were, I think one was a Sanmai, the other was a Damascus pattern. And I prefer simple blades. Um, I don't prefer crappy steels, but this happens to be M390, which I love. And the finish on it with this belt satin is incredible to look at. And it was just the spec that spoke to me the most. So this is the one I picked, and uh, I do not regret that one bit. I think this was the right choice for me to have of his knives. Um, yeah, so let's go over Ergo's carry cutting action, all that fun stuff, and uh, just kind of piece this knife out. So ergonomically, for my hands, granted I wear a medium glove, although I fill it out real well, um, <laughs> this knife fits my hands super, super well. I love the saber grip with this forward jimping. Um, the way that it's jimped all the way up there is right where my thumb wants to land on this knife. And in a saber grip, it just feels super locked in and really nice. It's a super neutral handle. So there's nothing here that's locking me in too much, but that little bit of well-placed jimping actually feels really welcome. I'm not usually a jimping guy, but up here, right where I land on a knife of this size and these proportions, it feels really good. I'm gonna give credit where it's due. That is good feeling jimping. Um, the neutrality of the handle feels really nice to me. There's nothing poking me, prodding me. Up here with the lock bars cut, 
It's not sharp to the touch. Everything just feels smooth and finished and like it's been thought about. So saber grip is great. Hammer grip is great. Draw cut is great. Reverse grip is great. Reverse grip draw cut is great. It's a neutral enough handle that in every grip, it feels really, really good. Um, and it's also shaped enough that it feels particularly locked in, especially in a hammer or a saber grip where people are most often gonna be holding this knife. Plus there is a little bit of jimping back here as well. So if I am choked back, there's another little patch there. And this jimping is aggressive in the sense that I feel really locked in, but it's not sharp and I hate sharp jimping. So I'm glad that it's not sharp. Um, all right, yeah, so ergos are honestly fantastic. Just really, really good. Um, let's talk action. So I will say the lock bar can be a bit sensitive if I'm landing on it and it's a small knife, so it's easy to land on it. Um, it can kind of want to seize up a little bit, but if I'm not pressing on the lock bar too much, even if it's just a little bit, like I can, I can definitely have a finger on it as long as I'm not bearing down this knife with studs <laughs> as thumb stud knives go. Granted, I'm Mr. Holes over studs. That's kind of my thing. Um, this knife with studs is dialed so well. I'm not entirely certain what wizardry he does on this detent, but my goodness, it's great. And it middle finger flicks just as well as it thumb flicks, which on a thumb stud knife is not always the case. And goodness, it's just really freaking crisp. It is exquisite the way that this detent is dialed. Um, it's also just really smooth all throughout, right? Like it's, it's not completely guillotine drop shutty, but goodness, it's, it feels silky <laughs> in all the right places. Uh, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, so yeah, action, I have no complaints. Middle finger flicks, it thumb flicks, and it drops in a fun way, and it makes nice sounds. Listen to this. It's got a nice snick to it, right? Middle finger flick. It, the acoustics of it are really nice. Everything about it just feels great. Um, Okay, so we've talked ergos, we've talked action. Let's talk carry for a second. Um, I do prefer deep carry clips, loop over deep carry style clips that go to the butt end of the knife. That's my love language of carry. Here we do not have that. We have a Timascus or dark tie or zircon tie, whatever you want to call it, clip. I think it's dark tie is technically what he uses. So this is zirconium and titanium and layers and then anodized. And it looks cool. Um, I'm not usually a fan of this type of material. In this case, I do really dig it because it's a nice matte finish. It's not overly purpley. It doesn't look like an oil spill. I think it looks quite good. The clip is super functional in and out of pocket. It's got good retention. It's nice and smooth. Um, it carries decently, like fairly deep. There's not a ton of knife sticking out of your pocket. Although it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's not a ton, but there's some there, right? It's not deep carry, but it's not overly shallow either. Um, I think overall the clip itself, because it's just, it works quite well. There's no sharp spots on it. There's nothing hot spotty in my hand. The clip is nice because of like, it's one of those rare cases where I probably wouldn't switch it for like a loop over wire clip because this Zerku tie clip or dark tie, whatever you want to call it, is actually really attractive looking. And it's a case where it's a nice enough knife to feel like it justifies a clip that's a little bit flashy, but not too flashy. It just works for me. So I wish it carried a little deeper, but I also don't. Like I just, I, I really like the way it's actually set up. I would hesitate to change anything about the clip. Um, in terms of thickness in pocket, it's not overly thin, but it certainly doesn't feel thick. And the size overall, pretty slim this way. It's not overly long. It's very comfortable. Um, you do obviously have all the speed holes milled out on the show side, no internal milling. Um, so that's all the weight relief you're going to get there, but it doesn't feel like an overly heavy knife. It doesn't feel like a featherweight either though. It feels honestly like, I think if it was lighter, it might not feel as expensive as it does. Um, but it feels nice. And I think some of the weight that's there is part of that it just feels very solid in every way. Um, but again, not too heavy in pocket. 
It's not too thick. It's nice and short. It's not too wide. It carries pretty smoothly. Everything is rounded. It feels very nice to actually carry. Um, all right, let's think what's next. So we've talked ergos, carry, action. Let's talk about cutting. Um, I have not been hard on this knife because I knew based on how much they go for that I was probably gonna end up selling it as much as I love it. So I've done a little bit of cutting, very, very light, mostly like passing it through paper, put it through a little bit of tape on top of a package, things like that. Um, this hollow grind <laughs> is remarkable. Um, it's a fairly thick blade stock for how kind of like short and stubby this blade feels. It's a super unique shape because you've got a tanto with a bowie, like a tanto bowie combo thing going on here. So you've got a little bit of a secondary tip right there. But the way that this stock is removed on this hollow right behind the edge, it gets so thin. Um, I don't know if there's possibly a way to illustrate on video how thin it is right behind the edge, but it, it just gets thin masterfully. And then it thickens right up to this flat. And then you've got this aggressive looking swedge that goes all the way out to the tip and just matches the curve of that clip point so well. And it's almost like a little bit of a harpoon here where this jimping patch is because you've got this ridge that comes up. It just, I mean, it, I struggle to think of a better looking blade than that right there. <laughs> it is remarkably good just to look at and then it's also wonderful to actually make cuts with. So yeah, I wish that this knife, I almost wish it wasn't worth so much so that I could justify keeping it and carrying it and using it as an actual user. Um, but that would feel irresponsible to me at the moment. So um, yeah, I mean, the cutting is wonderful because the blade is wonderful. The action is wonderful because the detent is wonderful and the studs are placed well. Um, the carry is very pleasant. The ergos are fantastic. It is just a home run of a knife. And I feel like especially I'm impressed at this point because lately I've been gravitating far more towards knives that are at least like three and a quarter, three and a half inch blade sizes. And this one being like right at a three inch blade, I didn't think would be would speak to me as much as it does, but it's just so excellent. Um, yeah, I love this knife. <laughs> I need to stop talking about it and gloating about it because it's going to make me want to keep it more and more, and I can't. I've promised it to another. Um, so yeah, I'm sure a bunch of people are going to ask how much was table on it, how much am I getting for it, and I'd rather not share in this case. <laughs> I think that the buyer would probably rather not share. I'd rather not go there. It was expensive, and it sold for even more expensive. That's the best way that I can put it. Um, I did not buy this knife to scalp it. Um, I was excited to get a lottery for any one of his knives so that I could experience one because I hadn't yet. And I didn't know for sure whether I would sell it or not. I also didn't know in the moment how much more they went for on secondary. Like, it's kind of preposterous at the moment how much these appear to be going for based on the offers I've gotten. Um, but yeah, I can see why there's demand for his knives. And he's a really nice guy based on my limited experience with Kurt American so far. Like the conversation I had with him, the handshake I shared with him, so he just, I, I liked the dude. Um, he seemed pretty down to earth and he makes really cool knives. So this will maybe, hopefully, not be the last American knife that I own. Maybe I'll get a book spot or something and I'll spec like, um, what's his other model? The Ultimatum. Those are ridiculously rad. I don't know how much I'd like that crazy jimping he does on them, but um, I would like to own one of those because it just looks wild. I don't know. Maybe I'll get another one at some point. Maybe I'll get another Karma. I don't know. But this one has been a thrill to own, <laughs> and I'm. Uh, it's going to pain me to send it out tomorrow and let it go, but that is what it is, I suppose. So, yeah, thank you guys for checking it out. Um, if you're interested in one of his knives, absolutely, I recommend one. They're fantastic. And, uh, yeah, hats off to Kurt for being such a cool maker. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.